clock. So I have started the recording aspect of the webinar in the hopes that it's going to work. And if it does, we'll make sure to send the link out to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar. I'm Victoria Beal with the Ohio LTAP Center, and we're very pleased to be working with the Office of Transit to offer this webinar today. I have to tell you, I'm also very excited that we had six people sign up for the webinar, and all six of you seem to be on here. So that's fantastic. It's the first time we've had 100% attendance on a webinar. Um, and that probably speaks volumes to the importance of the information you're going to be receiving today. So the webinar is on the Volkswagen Mitigation Trust Funds, and I know that the ladies from Transit have a tremendous amount of information to share with you. So just some quick housekeeping items, and we'll move right into the presentation. On the bottom left-hand side of your screen, there is a chat pod, and if it's during one of the times in the presentation that you're muted on the phone line. Feel free to enter questions in that chat pod. I'll be monitoring it and I will read those questions off to the presenters so they can provide responses. We're also going to have a couple of times during today's webinar that I will be unmuting your phone lines so you can ask questions of the presenters. But for the most part, while they are presenting, I'm going to keep the phone line muted so we can cut down on background noise. Um, other than that, I think we're ready to go. So ladies, do you want to go ahead and move into the webinar and you can introduce yourselves? You'll have to unmute yourself on your end. It's probably down there in the middle where you see the microphone with the round. There you go. Now I can hear you. All right. Hi, I'm Mona Hoffman. I'm the Urban Transit Coordinator at ODOT. I work with the 27 Urban Transit Agencies. I'm going to get your federal state fund. Juana, if you can make sure you're good and close to the brand. microphone there and the laptop, we'd appreciate it. You're not coming. So through. I may have worked uh, with some of you with uh, the repair grant. So Sarah and I are working together on this Volkswagen Mitigation Trust Fund um, that's administered through the Ohio EPA. Just to give a brief summary, um, and you may know this, the, in 2016, um, the Volkswagen was found to have installed devices on their vehicle um, to make them appear compliant with the uh, emissions law. Um, they were actually polluting the air more than what's allowable. So um, Ohio is receiving $75 million as part of that trust fund. And we have a good uh, working relationship with the Ohio EPA, so they know our uh, transit needs. And so um, and, uh, this slide shows um, the other projects that are part of this trust fund. Um, we have uh, locomotive engines at the uh, far left, and there's truck boats and ferries in this plan, trucks, school buses, and transit, transit buses on the end. Juana, well, they're having a, a hard time hearing. Can you please make sure you're good and close to the microphone there? OK. <laughs> I, it, you actually became even lighter then. Can you hear me now? Just barely. Wherever the, the microphone's at, if you could just get right close to it. Um, speak again, let's see. Better? A little. I, someone's typing a message in. Can you speak one more time? Hello? Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Okay. That's definitely better. Okay. All right. Um, so the $15 million set aside is going to be distributed in three years 
$5 million each in 2018, 19, and 20. So this first round is for $5 million, and um, each agency is limited to $2 million max that they can request. Um, I am getting the urban um, request as well as the small urban, and then Sarah and I are working with the rural agencies um, for them to get their application in which is due August 3rd, 2018. Uh, so this just shows the priority maps, uh, counties where the yellow is the first priority and the shaded blue stripe areas are the second priority. Um, we know that a lot of the rural systems um, may go into the priority counties, so we're going to ask that they um, they can separate their mileage of, of a percentage of how much they go into the priority counties. I think that will they'll benefit their application a lot. And so we um, talked about the funding with uh, our administrator, Chuck Dyer, and also um, more on the funding. And because the Volkswagen funds are non-USDOT funds, match the Volkswagen funds um, with FTA funds. So that could be 5307, 5339, 5311 funds. And the uh, percentage for the is 75 percent Volkswagen and 25 percent uh, a 25 percent match. So EPA uh, recommends that um, the agencies put in a 50% match. So we, we give a sample here of, of what this funding would look like based on the unit cost of the vehicle minus the scrap value. And then the 50% would be the Volkswagen funds. And then 50% can be FTA funds. And then you would identify the source of funding. Does anyone have questions so far on the program aspects? I'm going to go ahead and um, unmute you in the chat, or excuse me, on the phone lines. And you can definitely feel free to ask questions in the chat pod, too. So I've just unmuted the audience, and I'll just individually unmute you now, too. So if you have a party going on in the background, we're going to hear it. But anyone that would like to ask questions should now be able to ask them on the phone line. I see one question is being typed in the chat pod by Catherine, so one, if you want to give it just a second, we'll read Catherine's message or question off. Does anyone have one they'd like to ask over the phone line? Catherine would like to know, ODOT suggested they may be willing to contribute funding towards the match. Is that still true? Yes. So for the FTA funds, uh, ODOT is willing to apply toll revenue credits or transportation development credits towards the FTA portion. So the FTA portion likely will be 80-20. So ODOT's willing to put in the 20% match to the FTA funds as TDC. Are there other questions from the audience? Catherine's typing another message into the chat pod, which I'll read off to you. Can you repeat that again? Sorry. Okay. So ODOT is willing to apply transportation development credits to the FTA portion of the project. So FTA funds usually are 80% federal, 20% local share. ODOT's willing to apply the 20% local share as TDC so that there is a zero or no local share required from, from the agency.
there any other questions at this time? Catherine would like to know if you need to list that in the application. Yes, you definitely need to put that in the application. So if you're if you're showing the federal funds, I would put them in at 100%. So you're not going to show an 80-20 split. You would show the, the FTA portion as 100% uh, 5307 or 5339. Okay, any other questions at this time? No? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remute the phone line, but you can still feel free to ask questions in the chat pod. Give me just a second to unmute Juana, and now, Juana, you'll have to unmute yourself again on your computer so everyone can hear Sarah. Just give us a second here and Sarah will be with you. As you can see on the screen, they're unmuting themselves. Okay. Sarah? All right, can you hear me now? I sure can. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, everyone, this is Sarah Trafton. I'm with RLS and Associates. I am um, with ODOT providing program and technical assistance and compliance support and working with WANA on some special projects, including this VW grant. So what I'm going to do today is walk us through the actual grant application process and start out by, I had sent out, at least for the rurals, I had sent out information ahead of time to go ahead onto the EPA site and um, register and set up an account. If you haven't done that yet, I'm going to go ahead and this is what the screen will look like when you get to the diesel mitigation trust fund part. But here's the, this is the Ohio EPA site where you're going to, you're going to show up here when you, put, when you Google Ohio EPA. And from here, you're going to click environmental education. And then over here, you'll see on these tabs in the middle, VW Mitigation Grants. From there, you're going to go down, 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 down to instructions to apply for the grant. If you have created an account, you're going to do that. If you have not created an account, you're going to click here. And you're going to go ahead in and fill out this information and create your account. I've already done that, so I'm going to go back. And once you've done that, you're going to go into the instructions to apply. I'm going to read through those and go down at the, in about the middle of the screen toward the bottom, I guess. It's right here, so start or continue an application. So once you've started your application, um, you're going to have the opportunity to save it as you go and then come back in and work on it a little more as you want to. It's going to be really important not to click submit until you're absolutely sure because once that, that's done, we learned yesterday from the EPA, there's no way to unsubmit it. So um, if there's anything that you have that you have questions about that you want uh, WANA or I to review ahead of time, uh, the folks at EPA said that if the certification forms or your fleet information forms, if, if we want them to take a look at those uh, before you submit them, we can do that too. So from here, I'm going to continue because I've already started one. I did an example. So when you're starting yours, this is going to be your first page. If the most important thing here, obviously, is this date right here. August 3rd, your applications must be submitted before this deadline. They will not be considered if they're not. So. Again, now we have more thorough instructions on this page. Tells you a little bit about how you navigate the screens, the back and the next, and the saving, and exiting by closing the browser window. 
this warning right here, erase all and start over again. I'm not sure why anyone would ever want to do that once you've started a grant application. Um, that will, if you just get in there and decide, no, everything is wrong, maybe choose that. But otherwise, I would just avoid that. Go back and change what you need to uh, instead of erasing and starting over. Okay. Um, okay, so in the, this it's kind of just obvious information, your contact info, basic information here. Um, and then make sure anything that pops up in red while you're doing your application, obviously pay attention to that. Okay, here's where we start to get into some personalizing the information by your agency type. Okay, um, where I did this based on my work with the 5311, the rural folks who are on the phone with us today, you're going to want to click government. Now, depending on which of those you choose, you may get different fleet options available to you based on the type. I'm not exactly sure why that is, um, but having gone through this a few times, um, we noticed that in order to click the vehicles that, we're, that we, we think that the 5311s want, they need to click government as the type of applicant. Certification statement form. I'm going to just click on that for a sec. I sent this out to a few folks. Um, those forms are going to have to be attached at the end with the application. Those would be, if I was doing this, I would probably work on getting those certification forms completed first. What it looks like, I'm going to just pull that over here. And we want you to go ahead through this form, fill out everything as it applies to your agency, and then save it to your desktop. Print it out, sign it, date it. Scan it and save it to your desktop so it will be ready to upload with your application. Be true for the fleet data sheet that you're going to have to do. Okay, and so we're going to click yes. We have saved that certification statement to our computer. Okay, well, I think this was it, the public transit bus. Yeah, in order to get public transit bus to pop up, we needed to choose the government type. So here's where you're going to add the, the vehicles. And what we're doing, we're doing all replacement vehicles. Okay, we're not, not repowering. I'm not sure if there's anyone on the line who's looking at doing a repower, but for our purposes today, we're just talking about replacement vehicles. Um, here are the options that you're going to get. Okay, we're going to choose new diesel. There may be some folks who want to choose what we're basing this on, too, is the state term contract um, for, for the purposes of the 5311s. Um, that those are going to be basically a diesel engine. And we're replacing diesel engines for diesel engines because that's one of the requirements of funding. Uh, and no vehicles that are, um, the vehicles must be 2009 engines or older. So just for an example, I'm putting in four vehicles, and well, I'm not going to get fancy. Now, if you can, one of the things that's going to score an application higher is when we look at the emissions estimates that are going to be done, if you're going for diesel to new diesel, you're going to have some emissions reduction. If you went diesel electric, you're going to have a greater emissions reduction. Obviously, that's going to score your application higher. Um, I'm not sure about the other ones. I'm sure with some other types of all electric, obviously, would make your emissions um, greatly reduced. Um, but again, we're looking a little bit at what's available on state term contracts. If there are folks who do want to go out to RFP for something that may not be on that state term contract, um, we're going to need to put that in the project schedule. That will be a, an extra step. So it will make it a little bit more challenging, but it is possible. And Mona and I can help you with that as well. And here's the fleet data sheet that I was talking about. I'm going to click on that. It's going to open up a little different. 
that over here. So here's what the fleet data sheet looks like. And you're going to enter the for your applicable um, vehicles that you want to replace. You're going to enter those in here. Fill this out completely along with your new vehicle information. We're not working with locomotives or boats, ferries, or ports or car cargo. We're just looking all. We're going to stick with all the with the on road vehicles. So, your name and your contact information. Fill this out completely again and save it to your save it to your desktop so that you can upload that in the next couple of steps. I'll show you where that's going to go. So we're going to say yes. We've saved that. Okay, and the priority county here. I'm only going to get the option of those counties that are priority areas. I'm going to choose Ottawa as our example. We aren't going to include vehicles or equipment in the list below that do not meet the requirement. Um, that will, based on the amount of dollars we have and what we know is going to be asked for, that would bump your application totally out if you're, you, we're not going to have vehicles that don't meet the requirement. So we're only looking at vehicles that operate in priority counties. Sarah, there's a question from Andrea at Lake Tran. They would like to know, can we use CMAC funds for the match? Yes. Yes. It will be identified when built in the, in the project budget, um, there'll be a, a place where you identify where those funds, matching funds, are coming from. One of the things I wanted to mention, WANA showed the map of the priority counties. The EPA has been fairly clear that in this round, uh, those entities in the yellow first tier priority will most likely be the recipients of the awards. However, the second tier um, I, I think that some of you all who are in the second tier also operate your services. You travel in and out of those first tier counties. If we can identify and document the percentage of miles that your vehicles that you're replacing are traveling into those higher priority areas, we can include that in a narrative. That is going to improve, uh, the, improve your application prove it's, um, give it a better chance of, of winning. So we're going to choose yes here. We're going to certify all existing vehicles operate the minimum percentage, 25% or more, over the past 24 months in these one or more of these counties. operational status. EPA wants to see that the vehicles we're replacing are currently operational. You may have vehicles that are sidelined, ready for disposition, um, that you haven't been operating. That doesn't mean that they're not currently operational. It just means they're not currently in service. So I want to make sure that we're um, clear on the difference there. I know there may be some, some folks who have vehicles that are just waiting to be disposed that aren't operating in service. It's fine to include those. They're operational. They're, you're just not using them right now. But do use the most current. When you're um, giving us mileage or average daily mileage on the fleet sheet, you're going to want to put, if you have something you've sidelined for six months, put, put the most current full year of service, the mileage for the most current full year of service for the vehicle. Okay, so again here, model year for the engines is 2009 or earlier. We're saying yes, all of the existing engines were manufactured. We're not going to apply for anything that's not eligible, um, an eligible model year. So clicking yes there, moving along.
Again, we're not going to include vehicles or equipment that do not meet the requirement. This is the eligible gross vehicle weight saying yes. All the existing vehicles are the proper weight. Please confirm that. It's going to go back for a second. Saying yes here. This is going to be on that the fleet sheet that I showed you, that Excel spreadsheet. This information will be on that as well. The new engine age. We're buying new vehicles, so we would hope those vehicles will have engines 2017 or newer. They have to be or they're not going to. Your, your application will get bumped. So we're certifying. We're saying yes. Yes, they'll all be properly registered. Obviously, we're not going to operate vehicles that aren't properly registered. We're saying yes. We're going to certify that new vehicles purchased will meet the new vehicle mileage requirement. This one might be a little bit tough. Um, you know, if you've gotten a new vehicle before, a lot of times it's got more than 500 miles on it when it gets to you. It might have 700 or 1,000 miles on it when it gets to you. Um, we're going to have to work with vendors to ensure that when those vehicles are delivered, there's no more than 500 miles on them when they arrive. So we're certifying. Yes, of course, we're going to follow those rules. New engine certifications. This I thought was going to be a challenge, but it turns out that it's really not that difficult. When you go to the California CARB website, you can put in the engine type and it will show you that, that it's um, eligible. And again, if you have questions on this um, as you're going along after this webinar, we can help you out with that as well. This just talks about how the certificates of conformity, uh, the, the CARB is for the um, emissions, I'm going to click this. This will give you more information on that if you want to look at an example. So this is our very simple language we have here. Does the applicant have the required new engine certi certifications? These you will have to get though. Go on to the CARB website, print them out, uh, scan them, and upload them with the application. I believe there's a total of five attachments, um, and this and that the the CARB documentation will be one of them. This is another one. The salvage quotes: all the engines that are removed from vehicles, and not for repower, um, but will be the salvage for the the disposed vehicles that are being replaced. Uh, we asked some questions yesterday of the EPA about that, and they said to use information from your most recent scrapped vehicle to document the salvage value. So we're going to want to look at like for like, this one, a recent vehicle that you've scrapped, what the price was that you got for that, and that will be what we use here for scrap value. Okay, hold on. One is going to chip in here, chime in here on that one. Um, the Ohio EPA said if if your quote is more than a, a year old, they want a, a new quote, and you don't need. So if you're asking for four vehicle replacements, you don't need four quotes. You only need one quote for all four vehicles. And we've been we went over this um, when Juana showed the sample information there was a column for the scrap value uh, that's where you're going to put this we're going to say yes we understand the salvage value is going to be deducted from the award we also want to show that the salvage activity is going to take place within 90 days 
of the project being awarded. Is that correct? Delivered. When they're delivered, sorry about that. Again, we're going to certify salvaging activities will be completed in the required time. We're going to follow the rules. Yes, we are. We're going to confirm the list below represents activities. This may look a little bit different when you do it. You may add it in a in a different way, but. I think I think it depends on which of the vehicles that you choose, how obviously how that is going to, um, this blue box right here is going to be worded. No. So if one is just a minute, um, hold on one second. Okay, so now we're in the funding request replace public transit buses to new diesel. This is our base amount based on our putting in 50%. Fill this in. I just used some pretend numbers here. I'm saying 500,000 and we want 50% the DW funds and To share the love a little bit, we're 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 hoping not everyone's going to go for the for the full two million dollars since we only are playing with five million in this first round. These are the details of the amount that we're requesting. Going. Here's where you're going to put in applicant information. I haven't put in all this in information. I'm just using this really as a sample, but this is where your basic uh, entity information is going to go, your tax ID number. Here's where you're going to put some narrative. Do you have any liabilities? We're putting no. Hopefully you have none. If you do have some, this is going to impact your, this will adversely impact your application. Hopefully you're not involved in any of these things. Not a defendant in a legal action. We don't intend to lease the vehicles included in the application to a third party. Here's where again you're going to put your agency's information, the authorizing official at your agency who uh, is authorized to approve your request for funding. School officer, if that's different from the other, uh, from the person who's approving, the if it's different from the authorizing official, you enter that information here. Project content again, contact again if it's different than the authorizing official, enter that information here. Okay, so in this part, now we get to the narrative, very brief. These are, you're going to want to have um, to spell things out a little more, give a little more description, a little bit more detail in these areas. First of all, I want the funding source to be. Um, to be identified in here. This is just an example. So whatever the funding source is going to be, if it's CMAC, you're going to enter that in. You're going to describe how your vehicles are currently used right now. So the vehicles that you are requesting to replace. In this instance, I said vehicles are used in rural transit demand response services and flex route public transit services primarily and again I'm using Ottawa County as an example travel, travel on air average X number of miles per day here's where you may want to this would be where I would include the percentage that your vehicles may travel if you're in a second tier what percentage are those traveling into that first tier we really want to capture that to improve our chances um, for you to get the funding 
So you're going to be a little more descriptive than I was. I only used 181 of 1,000 characters, which anyone that knows me, I talk a lot more than that. So that's really being <laughs> very conservative with the with words. So you're going to want to uh, add a little bit more description there. How the vehicles will be used after the grant activities. This should map on directly to how they're used prior to the um, to the grant activities. Vehicle re replacements will be put in for the same duty cycle as those that are being replaced. Da -da -da. Um, I, I'm saying that if you are going to use them in a different way, obviously um, explain that in your narrative. In this, this section, here's how we want, in this section we want the narrative to describe how the new vehicles will be engaged in service in the priority counties. However you want to describe that in your narrative, go ahead and enter that in. Again, if anyone wants Juana or I to take a look at anything that you're, that you're adding for narrative, we're happy to take a review of it prior to the, the um, final completion and submission of the application. And I've been very brief. You're going to want to expand on this. Then we're going to want to ensure that we can, uh, that we're monitoring preventive maintenance for the new vehicles. Um, I've just, I've again been very, very brief. So preventive maintenance will be met based on OEM specifications. You want to talk a little bit here about your preventive maintenance um, process and how you your oversight and monitoring of your preventive maintenance really make this strong um, let them know that we will be maintaining the vehicles appropriately A quick description of how you are going to ensure that your salvage activities will be completed within the required time frame. That's within 90 days of the new buses arriving. I don't think that should be much of a problem for folks. Um, you're going to want to just describe that activity, how you're going to do it, and when you plan to do that. Project schedule, I have not done very much on this at all, but we're going to want to put in dates, the award date. Um, if you have to go out to RFP, uh, you're going to want to talk a little bit about the process for that, the dates that you might be doing that. If you're ordering off the state term contract, um, that will be what you fill in. Disposition date for the, for the old. Um, Obviously, that's going to be after the delivery date of the new vehicles and then when you would plan to have those service. Here's where you're going to upload the attachments. And again, you're going to have five attachments. The fleet data spreadsheet, certification statement, signed by your authorizing agent. So here, when you this says certification statement signed by authorizing agent, make sure that authorizing agent is the same as the authorizing agent in the in that section of the uh, narrative, that section of the grant application that we kind of cruised by already. Purchase quotes for new vehicles, the new engine certifications, and the salvage quotes. All of those need to be attached. And then this is the last part. Uh, you're going to sign, print your name. Um, if it's me, I'm probably going back two or three times to make sure everything's correct. I probably will have sent my narrative to whoever would read it and tell me if it's good or bad. <laughs> um, make sure that all the all of the uh, attachments that are going to be uploaded are complete and accurate. Um, you're going to sign it, and then you're going to... I'm not going to do this because I don't want to accidentally submit an application, so the ne this next train stop at the very end. Once you've signed this and you get to this one, you're going to review. It doesn't really let me go back. Okay. Um, another thing, another point, make a note of. Save a draft copy of your application for review. 
save it to your computer. Once it's submitted, you cannot go in and change anything. So that, that's all I have for you. Hopefully that was helpful. Again, Juan and I will be available to go through. If you're going through it and you have any questions or need any help, we're, we're here to help out. And uh, if there are any additional questions, we're, we've got a few more minutes. Let us know what you uh, what you want to know, and we'll answer as we can. Sarah, there's a question that's being typed into the chat pod right now, but I will also go through. And uh, well, let me read that one off first, then I'll unmute everybody. It's from Matthew, and he says, "I understand existing contracts are okay. What about orders? Can the bus be ordered but not delivered in advance of receiving an award for this program, or must the bus we probably meant to type B must or must the bus be ordered after an award?" That's a good question. Believe that it you have to have a date. No, it doesn't have to be ordered before the award. Is the question, um, does it need to be ordered before the award? You know, I've just unmuted Matthew. Maybe he just wants to ask you the question directly. Okay, great. Sure. Hi, Matthew. Hi. The, um, the purchase timeline and the build for heavy-duty buses is really long. So my question is, if the bus is already ordered, can you receive an award for this and use it to pay for the bus that is already ordered, or do you have to wait until you receive an award for these funds to be able to order that bus? I think you have to wait until we might have to answer that one after the webinar. Do you know what? Well, I know as far as FTA funds, I know you can have pre-award authority to order the buses. If those buses are not in an approved grant already, I think, I want to say yes, but I, I think we should confirm that with um, Ohio EPA to make sure we can use those buses as part of this Volkswagen application. Okay. I do know that there's a 24-month um, project period, so when you are filling out that schedule, don't have it go beyond a 24-month period. So the award date will be in October. Um, that might be the start of it. Then you may have your order placed in November or your RFP out in November. Um, uh, EPA has said you may ask for an extended schedule beyond the 24 month for those replacements, but we do want to try to make this happen within that 24 month project period. And we do have everybody's email addresses from when they registered, so we can send you the any follow-up answers that we need to. Thank you for asking the question, Matthew. It, everyone else has been unmuted as well, so we're happy to take questions. We still have time on the webinar. I, this is Juana. I did want to go back to the, the CMAC question. Um, was the agency intending to apply for CMAC funds through the uh, MPO or through an ODOT program such as the Ohio Transit Preservation Partnership Program. What, where were these CMEC funds coming from? Hi, Juana. This is Andrea from Lake Tran. Um, we have CMAC funds earmarked out until 2022, um, and so that would be the um, potential source of the CMAC funds. So it wouldn't be anything coming from the MPO or yeah. ODOT. From I from the MPO. Okay, okay. So yes, you can use those CMAC funds for um, as a match for for okay. this Volkswagen grant. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions? Don't be bashful. We've got the the ladies here to answer it for you. So not hearing yeah, any. I think we have we have at least one that we need to follow. Um, we need to come back come back Sounds around like someone to. Someone was starting to answer ask a question. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Sarah, and, and one of this is Lori from Ottawa. Hey, we looked on the state term contract today. Maybe we're not looking in the right spot, but I was we were not able to find any diesels listed. There were only gas. 
equal engines um, on the state term contract? Correct. Because I know, Sarah, you had some, told me that link, and I appreciate it, but I know we looked today, and, and maybe I'm not looking, we're not looking in the right location, but I don't know if you can point me in the right area to where to, you know, where to find these pieces on the state okay. term Okay, one I need to follow back up on, too, um, to ensure that diesel engines are an option. I was, um, yeah, pretty sure that we had, because we've had diesel delivered delivered to folks before, so Juan is going to go ahead and and check on that now. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Sure. Any other questions from the audience? Okay. Yeah, we're going to have to, um, we'll review the options on the state term contract just to verify that diesel engines are av available, and um, we can get back to you on that today. Well, if there aren't any other questions at this time, um, we're going to go ahead and wrap things up. But please know that you can definitely email questions in after the, the webinar has been completed and that Juan and Sarah are definitely here to help you through this whole process. So I think you ladies have done a wonderful job with the webinar. I know this was your first time, Juana, doing a, a webinar like this. So um, you both have done a great job. And Sarah, good job Thanks. as always. Thank you. Thanks. So. And thanks to everyone for participating. If you have questions, please let us know. We want to um, we want to make sure that we we get you what we can with this with this uh, funding program. All right, we're going to go ahead and end the webinar now. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. One thing I